Welcome to Bearded Meeple. Someone that grew up playing Clue or Monopoly or Battleship, you're not necessarily going to throw them into a game of Caverna and say, hey, hope you have fun. No, you're going to give them a gateway game to reintroduce them to the modern board game era. One game that's a nice card game that does this is Love Letter. And while Love Letter may seem pretty simple, AEG has another game similar to Love Letter. In fact, it takes place in the same universe, but to me, it's about 10 times better. It's patronized by Hisashi Hayashi. In it, you're still playing a card to beat other cards for points, but you're also going to collect cubes and try to monopolize your points for a stronger finish in the game. It's got strategy, but it's not so heavy it's going to push people away. Let's check it out. Patronize is a trick-taking card game. And I know what you're probably thinking. Great, another game where all I have to do is play a card with a higher value than someone else, and I take the points card. Well, this one actually has a little more meat on the bone, so to speak. In it, you'll be playing personality cards. These cards will give you points at the end of the round. More importantly, you are playing these cards to collect fame cards for points. As well, you will also be collecting cubes. The cubes you collect will be based on your personality cards of yourself and your opponents. As well, the personality cards also have special abilities that will determine the value of your cubes. Can you balance all three and win the game? Let's find out. The personality cards all show the card's strength number, any fields they may or may not specialize in, cubes you and opponents will be collecting, special abilities for the cubes, as well as point value. A fame card is played with a value of six points. From their hand, each player will play a card that they think they might be able to win with this round. So we have a sculptor, cartographer, and theologist. And even though the theologist has a strength of 11, the sculptor specializes in the arts, which this fame card favors, so he will win the points. So you really have to balance what card you want to play when, because highest value will not always win. And as you can see, the fame cards vary. Sometimes they specialize in something, other times they don't. So far, the game has been pretty straightforward. But hold on, because this is where it gets interesting and strategy really comes into effect. In the game, you always play with two more fame cards than there are personality cards for each player. And that means every player will be sitting out two rounds. As we know, the sculptor has won this fame card, will get the six points at the end of the game, and they get a yellow cube as indicated by their card. The players who lost this round take a cube indicated on their card, and they also get a cube indicated by the card of the player to their left. So they get blue-red, this player gets red, and a yellow cube. Any player that had passed and not played on a round gets two options. They may choose a cube of their choice, except black, which we'll explain in a moment, or they may steal a card of another player. And this affects two things. They will get those points at the end of the game. As well, you may be stealing a card based on the ability that the card allows for the cubes. Because remember, the cubes and the ability may give you additional points at the end of the game. The black cube is there because every player gets one cube to use once in the game that protects that card and any card with a black cube may not be stolen by a player who passed. And that, my friends, was Patronize. It's a lot better than a, oh, this number beats that number. Oh, look at me, I won. You actually have to pay attention and plan out what you're going to do. I like it. I hope you get a chance to check it out. I'll talk to you again soon. Mm -hmm.